All right, so today's video is about array reduce and array map. Um, reduce was probably one of the harder things for me to understand when I first really got into them. Um, it, you know, a few years ago, whatever time it was, for each came to JavaScript, and we no longer had to write straight up for loops or while loops. We could use for each, and then underpinning for each was actually reduce and really understanding reduce and what you can do with it made coding a, a lot more fun and then investigating code which I'll show you later um, actually was a lot easier learning map and learning reduce so today we're gonna go through a couple examples that helped me understand it and maybe it'll help you understand it too so let's start off with some uh, random JSON so for this we're gonna use the JSON generator uh, we're just gonna generate this and upload it it's gonna give us a, a URL and we're going to hop over to jQuery where I know that jQuery is loaded onto the page <laughs> so that I'm just going to uh, uh, cuz I'm going to use jQuery for this this um, clear the console please I'm going to use jQuery just to get the json so get json and there's our link uh, and then we're going to say dot then function and we're just going to Let's make our console a bit bigger. Okay, so we're just going to um, say window.json equals json. Okay. Oh. Oh. Haha. <laughs> yes, I actually have to pass json in. Boom. Json. Ah, oh, I got to spell it right, man. Okay. Let's, let's clear this out. <laughs> There's json now. So here we go. There's our json object um, with some things in it. We've got an ID, an age. We got a gender and some other things. Okay, so we got a lot of things going on here. So let's talk about let's let's do something that is like the classic reduce example, which is a summation. So we're just going to dive into this and we're going to explain it as we go. The basic concept of reduce is it takes an array and it turns it into something else, something brand new. That can be another array, it can be a number, it can be an object, it can be anything else. But that's what reduce does. It takes an array and turns it into something else. Okay? So let's talk about let's do a let's first before we do any reduce, we're going to do a for loop over this object and we're going to do a total summation of all the ages. We're going to do a sum of the ages, all right? So we're going to have a var age sum equals 0. We got to start off with our initial value and then we're going to say for var i equals 0, i is less than um uh json.length right because that's each of this is Jason's in right here um, and then I oops and then I plus plus okay and then inside of here we're gonna say var item equals Jason I right that's our initial item as we're looping through our iterations and then we're just gonna say sum plus equals uh, item dot H okay and then if we hit enter uh, sum is not defined because it's called age sum not sum, right? There we go. And we get 189. And we can see our variable that we could use later in applications, 189. So our, our total sum is 189. Now, if you see the couple of steps I had to take here, writing this in console, which sometimes you do, I had to write that in a couple different statements. I had to write var age sum. I had to write the for loop, two lines inside the for loop. Okay? Now, the... I should point out, reduce doesn't necessarily reduce the amount of code you have to write, but it does make the code a lot more simpler to kind of understand uh, as you're reading through code. So let's clear this out for a second and write the same thing with reduce now. So instead of having to write var age sum equals zero, we can just say var age sum equals json dot reduce and then our function. So what the hell? Sorry. Function. Um, so already we're going to have one statement alone. We're going to have one statement that's going to do our loop and it's not going to have two separate areas. That's kind of like the biggest takeaway from reduce is that uh, you can say var my thing equals this thing and then you can move on from this. Okay. So let's talk about what reduce actually takes. So we've got, so, re JSON, so reduce takes a function as the first parameter and a starting value as the second parameter. In our case, we saw before it was var age sum equals zero. So in our case, we're going to start off with zero. Okay? We'll get more into this value in a little bit. There's three parameters passed into reduce: all, item, and index. Okay? All item index. All item index. Repeat that in your head till you get it. All item index. All item index. The biggest problem people have with reduce is they forget what the arguments are. All item reduce. 
Okay. Now, these aren't the actual names of the parameters. This is what I use to remember it. All is the entire thing, the final thing I'm going to return. In this case, it's going to be a sum. Item is the individual thing I'm looping on right now. And index is, you know, whatever is 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, whatever my index is. So to do as an age sum, all we have to do in this case is say all plus equals item.age. One key factor here with reduce, you always have to return something. In our case, we're going to return all. We're going to be continuing to mess with all, and then we're going to return it each iteration. So every time we get in here, we get all back, we get to modify it, and then we get to return it. And we know that we can immediately start doing this because all starts off at zero. Right? That's the key here of this value, its initial value. So if I hit enter, and then I can check out my variable, we can see we get the same answer. But it was much more clear if we're looking at code here to say var age sum equals this thing. Okay? Let's do a few more examples to show you some more stuff that reduce can do. Um, one cool thing about reduce is that, and before I clear this out, is that this initial value, 0, <coughs> can be anything. It can even be an object. So you can, you can change an array into an object. Now, why would you want to do that? What, what kind of scenario places itself to changing zero, or sorry, to change an array into an object? Well, one case is, let's, let's make a condition for our application. We want to take an array, and I want to get a new object keyed by email address, and the value being the name of the person, right? So I want a new object that's keyed by email, and that is in the new person, right? And and so let's so let's do that real quick. So we're gonna say, um, you know, var new object equals uh, JSON dot reduce function all item index. Okay, and we're gonna start now. This is gonna be an object. This at this point. At this point, we're gonna convert our array JSON into an object. All right, and what do we want? Well, we're going to say all, and we're going to key it by uh, item.email, and we're going to set that equal to item.name, right? Boom. Oh. Of undefined. So we have to, uh, oh, we didn't, we didn't return all, see? Always return all. Sorry about that. Always return all. And now if we look at new object, you can see we have a new really nice object that's keyed by email address. Right? And that's valued as name. So we converted, right? We converted an array into an object. You can see how this might be really, really useful. So let's take this one step further. Let's add a condition. The uh, at this point, all of our examples have had the same number. Well, uh, this one example, I guess we've done. The re resulting object had the same amount of re results, let's say, as the original array. Okay, the original array had whatever, six people in it, one, two, three, four, five, six people in it, and this new object also has six keys in it. So we don't have to do that though. Reduce can reduce the amount. So let's take that same thing we just did and add a condition. You always have to return all, but you don't always have to do something to it. So let's just add a condition that says it has to be female for this object to exist. So if item.gender equals female, okay, and Let's just indent this so it makes a little bit of sense. So now we're only going to return, we're only going to actually add an item, right? So we're going to get into this iteration, item's going to come on in, and we're going to now check item. If it doesn't check out, we're just going to return our, for our value of all. We're not going to touch it at all, we're just going to move on from it. But let's take a look at this. And if we run that and we check new object, we can see that we have a new object here and it's got two pieces of information in it, and these are both females. If I run it again, and this time check for male, you can see that we've got, well, the rest of the people here, right? So there's the rest of them. Now, so you can kind of see how you could take an array and convert it into an object however you want, whatever use case you have for it. Let's take this one step further now and make this a little bit more useful. We're going to take the array and we're going to reduce it to an object keyed by gender where each gender holds the actual entire thing. So we're going to basically we're sorting in a way this entire array into a, a valuable key, right? So, let's clear this out. So we're going to say json.reduce function all item index. And we're going to reduce this into an object like we have been doing. But in this case, I know the keys I want here, 
I know the two keys I want. I want male and female. So I'm going to say male colon a new array and female colon a new array. Now I know this is a little weird syntax, but if you just take a look at this object for what it is, these are initial values. I know what I want in the end. I want to sort this array into two categories, male and female. Starting these initial values here is really nice because if I didn't do this, I, I would have to check that the mail key exists and add it before. Okay, So it's really helpful to start with initial values that I know I'm going to want. So what does this look like? Well, we're just going to say um, all item.gender equals item. And then, of course, we have, whoops, sorry, shift enter, not enter. We need to return all. Okay? And if we take a look at that, we get a really nice object keyed by female and male. And here are my, uh, my objects inside, right? There it is. And actually, actually, this is totally wrong. I apologize. We want these to be arrays. We start these off as arrays, and I set them to objects, so I'm sorry about that. Uh, what we need to do is not do this. We have to say dot push item. So sorry to confuse you there. I'll explain what I did here. That is confusing. I set them, I set male to item. So every time it was hitting that gender, it was overwriting the whole object. So I'm sorry about that. What I really needed to do was every time I hit male or female, I need to push on to those arrays. Again, that's why we set these as initial arrays. And again, we still have to return all. So now that we've returned all, and now we're pushing on to the arrays that we initially started with, this is correct. And now we can see that we've got two females and five males in this object. This is a very useful implementation at this point, right? We, ta we took a giant list, imagine your database, right? We took a whole list from your database, and we've just sorted it by male and female, right? Super useful. So, um, lastly, there's, well, there's, I guess there's two more things I want to talk about. Um, there are some ECMAScript 5 helper array functions that people are aware of. You've got array dot, um, you've got filter, you've got, let's see if I can actually, yeah, you've got filter, right? You've got array dot prototype dot, you've got sum, you've got any, you've got map, right? You've got all these different types of things, but they all come from reduce. All of them. Even for each, they all come from reduce. Okay? I'm going to show you that now. I'm going to take filter, which is a really useful one. You take an array and you filter it out, filter things out, and you get a new array that's a smaller array. Okay? That's array.filter. So let's, let's write array.filter using reduce. So what we're going to do is we're going to say array.prototype.filter equals a function. And we're going to pass in the function that the user is going to write. right? And then we're going to just, in this case, we're going to return, return this.reduce function all item index as usual. And we're going to start off, our initial value is going to be an array because we're doing array functions at this point. And then we're just going to say, well, uh, we're going to run that function, right? And we're going to pass it item and index because that's what filter is expecting, right? Um, but we have to do an ish a condition on it. So if this is successful, if like, we're going to assume this is going to return a Boolean because that's what filter is supposed to do, if this thing, then and only then will we go ahead and add it to our final result. Again, our final result, all.push item. We're not going to have an else, because it's just going to move on. And we're going to return all. Again, so here's what we're doing. We're going to say array.prototype filter, return this.reduce all item index. If running our function is successful, go ahead and push it. Otherwise, don't. So that's our filter. And now what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to use it, right? So if we look at array.filter at, at this point, um, sorry, array. Well, we can use .filter. You can see that this is our function. This is the one we just wrote, right? And before, when we wrote this, it was the, the uh, native code one. But at this point, this is our code we just wrote. So if we do json.filter using our code, pass it a function. Our function was passed item and index, right? Um, we can just say, you know, return if gender equals female, which we should get two results for. If we run that, 
uh, sorry, item.gender. We gotta use the item.gender. You can see we get two results, and it's those two female objects from before. So we just wrote filter using reduce, right? Reduce is the core bottom level method that all of these are written on top of. And uh, lastly, uh, I said that you could even write for each that way. Uh, I'm running low on time, so I'm just going to kind of paste this one in. But for each is just as simple as filter is. Here's for each. All we're doing is we're running reduce, and we're just running the function and returning it to item. That's it. That's what for each does, right? There's nothing special about for each other than it just runs reduce and returns the item. That's it. That's all for each is reduce. Last thing I'm going to show you is map. Map is also an implementation of reduce, but map is like special because it does one thing and it does one thing really well. And that one thing that it does is returns one thing. <laughs> so you're going to take an array and you're going to pick something out of that array and convert it to a new array. Now the condition with map is that the resulting array has the exact same number of entries as the original. So if we do json.length, whatever we do will have seven entries. So if we do json.map, let's, let's, as an example, say we want to give me, show me all the ages in one array. I want all the ages in one single array, array of ages, right? So map function item return item.age. Boom. There we go. There's an array of length seven that has all the ages in it. And if I want to do that in my application, maybe I want to bring in a whole big database object, and then I want to get just an array of things. One use case for this that I see all the time is you want to pass an array of IDs to the database, right? So if I just change this from item.age to underscore ID, here's an array of IDs. I could take these array of IDs, pass it up to the database, and I could update these entries, or I could say trigger or refresh on these entries. But you've taken a big database object. You don't want to send the big database object, but you can just send the IDs. That's how you use map. Again, map is just another implementation of reduce, but map's very useful. One of the things I like to do with map all the time is I have this big JSON object that I need to look at. Sometimes I have a huge one, and I'm like, ah, I need to see what what is everyone's favorite fruit. I just need to see it for a second, right? So I can just really quickly in console go go function item, you know, return item dot favorite fruit just really fast and just take a look at it. I can just look at it really fast in console and go, okay, there's one, two, three. There's a bunch of strawberries. Good. You know? Sometimes it's just it's really nice to debug code and just be able to look at your objects and you know, just can kind of mess with them and muck with them. So anyway, that is map and that is reduce. I hope that you practice reduce and that you figure it out because reduce is one of the most useful things that you end up knowing in your JavaScript career.